Good evening. Welcome to the December 6, 2018 Murray Planning Commission meeting. I'm Lisa Mokiewicz. I'm the vice chair. I'll be acting chair tonight. To my left, we have Scott Woodbury, Marion Patterson, Phil Markham. And to my right, we have Sue Wilson, Ned Hacker, and we're the commission. From the staff, we have uh, Zach Smallwood, Jared Hall, um, Jim McNulty, Ryan Fer Bryant Farnsworth from our law department, and I think that's our staff. All right. So a little bit of housekeeping. If you have cell phones, please put them on mute. Don't ring. If you receive a call, could you please step out to take the call? Um, if you would like to speak tonight on one of our items, please step up to the microphone, state your name, address. Please li limit your comments to three minutes as an individual. If you're an individual rep representing a group, we'll allow five minutes. If you have comments you'd like to write, we have forms up front. You you can write your comment and the staff will read it into the minutes. Uh, all right, let's get started with our agenda. Item number one, approval of minutes from the November 15, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Have we all had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. yes. Yeah. I do have a question though, Chair, for the staff. I just noticed this. It says an audio recording is available. Because we're filming it, shouldn't it also be audio and video? Um, probably. <laughs> there you Thank go. You. Thank you. So, I figure, you know, they film it. We might as well, right. if people want to go back and watch it for their viewing pleasure, <laughs> then. In, yeah. in their free time. Yeah. Yeah. He watches it, gets popcorn, invites the neighbors over. Let's watch the planning commission. So. <laughs> Say hi. Yeah. Hi, hey, Susan. Susan. Susan watches it. So. Okay, right. that, that's all I had. Excellent. Any other changes or corrections? No. All right, can we entertain a motion? No, we don't need a motion. Madam, can we do Just, it right now? Make a motion. motion. Okay, yeah. entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we... Uh, oh, were you going, Ned? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry Ned. You're, You're good. behind the point set. You missed the last two meetings. I only missed Go the ahead. last one. <laughs> all right. I'll make a motion that we approve the meetings from the November 15th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Excellent. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Now, out of protest, he's not even. <laughs> second. Second. Okay, we have a second. Okay, so we have a motion to accept the minutes from the November 15, 2018 Planning Commission meeting by Commissioner Woodbury and a second by Commissioner Markham. Can we call the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Okay, no, item number two is conflict of interest. Do we have any conflicts of interest tonight? No. No. All right, then I don't either. Item number three is a finding of facts. Um, November 15th meeting, we had eight finding of facts. Um, fact number one was Merrick, and, Meraki. Uh, sorry, Meraki, thank you, Institute, uh, conditional use permit at 6576 South State Street, unit 402. Item number two was Stellar Senior Living at the address 666 West, 5300 South. That was also a conditional use permit. Item three was a conditional use permit for Georgia Auto Cells 4195 South, 500 West, Unit 5656. Item four was a conditional use permit for Hillcrest Junior High School Seminary Building, address 315 West Hillside Drive. Item five, conditional use permit for H&H &H Fireproofing, 451 West, 4070 South. Item six, Mario's Auto Cells 4195 South, 500 West, Unit 71. Item seven, Woodstock Village, HOA, uh, long address, Woodstock Village subdivision on Rainburn Road near 1300 East and Rainburn Road near Vine Street. Item number eight is conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit for the Jones and Nichols um, project at 6322 South, 1280 East. Has everybody had the opportunity to review the findings of fact? Yes. yes. Are there any corrections or comments, discussion? All right, let's entertain a motion for the finding of facts. Uh, Ms. Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve the findings of fact for the eight uh, uh, conditional use permits that you uh, just read into the minutes. We have a second. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion to accept the finding of facts as read into the record for the November 15th reading planning commission meeting the motions by Phil Markham and a second by Ned Hacker. All, of, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Item number four. Okay, this is our 
formal agenda. Item number four is Hamlet Development. Is the applicant here tonight? Great. We'll get to you in just a second. No, I think no, it's no. River Park. Right. River Park right. Collins. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped. I'm. Thank you. That was number seven. I apologize. I am Miss <laughs> Githo. No, I'm just playing. Everyone here is important. We want to hear everyone. Item. Item number four is River Park Commons. I apologize. Um, is the applicant here? Thank you. Okay, from staff, Mr. Hall. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a conditional use permit request at 4878 South Murray Boulevard. The commission will recognize this from previous approvals. The uh, project was recently approved in a in a similar site plan, almost exactly the same site plan, but as a condominium project. So I'm going to go through um, and highlight the, the changes that have been made, but we'll go through the, for the record, the basic uh, tenets of the project as well. So this is the project property area on uh, on Long Murray Boulevard. It's on the west side, just at the creek. Uh, you can see Cottonwood Creek there, at the top of the uh, top of the picture. The zoning is RM15. Um, the project was previously approved for a 40 unit uh, townhome condominium project. Uh, this particular application is to change that condominium approval uh, to a conditional use approval allowing uh, low rise apartments. Low, uh, townhome style still, and actually looking very much the same, but as a rental property instead. Um, <clears throat> to go over the site plan just a bit, uh, for the record and for those that weren't here previously, it is one, a single entrance project and then a looped access road throughout. Uh, it's 26 feet wide. Um, these are garage load units. Uh, there are garages facing into this private access drive. The units all face out onto a, a walkway that encircles the uh, project and runs throughout. Um, those same changes we made before, uh, better connecting the sidewalks to the parking areas are still there. Uh, it's still 40 units. Again, they're all still townhome style, side by each units. Um, one of the main changes that was uh, made was that we asked for additional parking. This was originally parked at 2.5 spaces per unit. Uh, two of the spaces were in the garage. Uh, these are all two car garage units. So two of the spaces were in the garage and the other units, the other half a space uh, was contained in the parking areas that were provided. Uh, when the project came back to us as, a, as an all rental project, um, staff felt like we needed to increase the parking a little bit. Uh, Brighton Homes was able to increase that by 10 stalls. Uh, the second, uh, slide here shows you where those stalls are located. We had previously had stalls already located in this area and here we've added them here and here. Uh, so the increase is from 2.5 to 2.75 spaces per unit, including the garages. The interior road will have to be signed, no parking. It's only 26 feet wide. It'll allow good access for emergency access, but not if people are parked on that road. So it'll all be signed that way. There's not a lot of distance, as we talked about in the previous meetings, between the garage units and the road. We're talking about five feet generally, but in some places there's a little more, but most of the time you're talking about about five, about five feet, not enough to park a car in. So we do want to sign the whole thing as no parking. Um, as long as we're talking about parking, we'll, we'll cover this real quickly as well. Uh, because of the other approvals that we did or through that process, it was um, conditioned by the Planning Commission that Murray Boulevard for the length of this property or the length of this development project would be signed and striped no parking. Uh, that will still be the case. That condition didn't change as, a, as we went through the process again with the uh, city staff. So that'll still be the case. Um, the amenities for the project were not uh, impacted by the additional parking. That was kind of the balance we had to strike. It took a little time to do. We didn't want to lose the playground that's still situated at the south end of the project, and we didn't want to lose the trail connection uh, being installed at the north. So those are both still required as amenities. Uh, this is just a, a clip of the, uh, the trail, Little Cottonwood Creek Trail that the city is trying to build through this area. Uh, this is the crossing on Murray Boulevard. Uh, down in that lower photograph, you can see the area where the crossing is. This is just a shot from summertime of the creek to make you all feel bad about how miserable it is outside right now. Um, again, this is the embankment of the creek. We were able to, in the landscaping plans, you'll remember from the previous application, uh, through that tree survey, we were able to identify a lot of trees in this area along the embankment that can be saved uh, and back in the southwest corner as well. That landscaping plan also wasn't impacted in terms of the mature trees that we're keeping by the additional parking. So we will still get the trail connection. We felt like that was really important, and it's an important part of their project, not just for the city, but for them as well. Um, I'll just quickly cover the, the fencing. There are four different types of fencing. Um, we have a four-foot picket with some vinyl-coated chain link to provide some security on the river side <coughs> along the parkway. Four-foot vinyl or four-foot vinyl picket without the chain link fencing in the front along Murray Boulevard. This is six foot privacy. 
uh, vinyl fencing on that south side of the perimeter or the south perimeter of the property where it's abutting against those existing apartments um, and and townhomes there and then again here we'll have some of that same uh, vinyl coated fencing and, and picket here or fence post and, and split rail and vinyl coated chain link thanks it's taken me a long time to get into the rhythm tonight sorry um, so that's the fencing the, the last kind of fencing the fourth kind is the picket here that's in front of the units that kind of provides a little bit of an area for the uh, the units themselves between them and the sidewalks that run through the interior of the project uh, the lighting hasn't changed that's the interior lighting for the project um, another point of change from this project as it becomes a rental project instead of the owner occupied uh, condominium townhomes that we were looking at before the previous renderings the the design architecturally is still the same but some of the materials used have changed so this was this unit you can see that change most easily in the six unit building <clears throat> The second unit in uh, previously was shown as all brick veneer. It'll now be stucco with brick veneer at the bottom. Uh, and here you had vinyl, or you had, I'm sorry, hardy board with brick veneer at the bottom, and now you're going to have stucco with brick at the bottom. So that's changed. Other than that, colors are still the same. That brick veneer is still the same. It's just used a little bit less here. But the varied. Uh, great. Sorry. Let me fix that. not going to give me an option sorry I'm going to continue while I try to fix this okay so those things have changed um, but that's in addition to that some other elevations have changed there was more hardy board on the back side the rear load units where the garages are Zach can you take a look at that where the garages are rear loaded it was hardy board before that'll be stucco now except for the end units that'll still have some hardy board um, to, to provide kind of a, a nicer end unit and then the the, the side uh, <coughs> elevations again hardy board when they're facing streets uh, when they're more visible other than that the colors and materials are the same with that change we are recommending approval of the conditional use with several conditions um, and we I'll just highlight a couple of them real quickly they mostly revolve around the parking we're gonna have the same conditions we had before from the engineer about active foundation drains etc because of the proximity to the river none of that has changed the construction will all be the same the floor plans haven't changed at all however the the lower level that basement level um, with this change, we're able to say that the, the apartment community will, can, will be conditioned upon them using that for storage as opposed to anything else. So storage in that basement level allows us to maintain the garages clear of, of storage material so we make sure we get cars in those garages. Uh, following up on that, we've asked them as a condition of approval to have their management company register the vehicles that are in the that are for tenants in the, in the buildings, no more than two per unit so that we don't have a problem with that additional parking that we've, that we've conditioned this upon. Um, other than that, the conditions are largely the same. Um, the signage for no parking, et cetera, is all still in here. Um, and I think I already went over the, um, the new changes with the basement use. Um, with that, I'll, I'll open myself up to any questions from the commission at this point. I do have a quick question sure. um, regarding the parking. Mm -hmm. Adding the spots <clears throat> looks like we added them to where it was landscaped before. Does yes. it change the landscaping? I didn't. I looked in the packet and I maybe just missed it. Yeah. Do they it, still meet all their landscaping requirements the landscaping by getting rid of a big portion, yeah. you know, of some of their landscaping? We lost some, but we didn't lose any of the part that was part of the active amenity. Okay. And they were already over the percentage that we would require. So we didn't really come out of compliance. So they were over landscape before, so they can lose some of it to park. Okay. We tried to lose the parts that wouldn't affect the landscaping plan. Gotcha. Most, so. Anything else? Thank you. All right. Forty forty units. Okay. Okay. All right. Is the applicant present? Would you mind stepping up, stating your name, address? My name is Sean Poor. Uh, my address is 215 North Redwood Road in North Salt Lake. Um, Mr. Poor, have you had the opportunity to read the conditions? Yes, I have. Do you feel like you can, can comply with the conditions? Yes. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the presentation? Um, well, I, I know that uh, there's questions as to why this, this change is, has come about, and so I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about it. Um, over the last six to nine months we've seen so we we build this exact same 
product up in Davis County. And, and we've seen over the last six to nine months a, a big slow in our sales. Um, and that compounded with our with our rising construction costs. At this point, um, Brighton Homes Management felt that it was it made more sense financially since we weren't selling very well um, as as we had been in, in the year previously that we that we switch it over to a rental community. We, we as as Jared mentioned, we don't plan on finishing the basements, but we do want to put sub rough down there and stuff so that if we we've talked with Jared about the future, if we did want to come back and, and plot it, if, if things change there and in the market or something like that, that we could come back and, and change that. But for for the moment and uh, for the approval, um, we wanted to switch over to rental for for those reasons. So. All right. Does the commission have any questions for the applicant? Okay, not at the moment. All right, thank you very much. All right, at this time we'll open for public comments. If you have something you'd like to, a question or statement you'd like to make, please step to the mic. Okay, going. He, he, he knows the answer now. So. Yeah. My name is Jerry Budd. I live in the Aberdeen Estates, 526 Lock Levin Lane. Um, I'm assuming from, from what the presentation was that all those big uh, big rigs, the semi-trucks that are parked along the street there now, won't be, <clears throat> won't be there anymore, I'm hoping. Correct. Is that correct. the case? Yes. That's correct. Okay. Well, it, uh, if I'm correct, the, the no parking extends to the frontage of this project only. Yeah. Is that correct? The, the, the rigs are parked in front of this project. Sure. So sure. they'll, they'll okay. probably just move, but okay. at least they won't be in front of this. Okay. Yeah. We're not eliminating, eliminating <clears throat> No, we're not everywhere, eliminating. So. They'll okay. just move to somewhere else. Yeah. 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 That's, that's good clarification. Thank you, guys. Okay, so any other public comments? Okay, seeing that there's none, we'll close the public comments section. Bring it up front if there's any discussion. All right. You know, I, I don't know. I, really the only benefit I see to this is the change in uh, posting no parking on Murray Boulevard. I, I honestly am not excited about this going rental. Um, I think there's uh, there's already an oversaturation in this immediate area of rental units, and um, the only positive is the ability to eliminate those uh, rigs parking there on the street. And I don't know if that's enough to uh, to justify going from condominium to rental just because things aren't going as well for the company as they anticipated. Any other comments or discussion from the commission? I, I mean, just want to say, agree, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I, I, I agree with Mr. Markham. Yeah. I'm, I'm disappointed. Yeah. yeah, we were so excited to, when this <clears throat> proposal came forward to have these condo, these townhomes, like we were saying, this is something that the city really needs. Um, and we understand that, you know, the company needs to change for rentals, but I think that's a, that's a disappointing change. Yeah, I think, you know, in Murray, we take great pride in, you know, living here and and people want to live here and want to own here. And, you know, we, we recognize that we're missing that a lot of the middle piece, mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as Mr. Hall talked about earlier. But it'd be great to see him as owner occupied rather than rentals. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So <clears throat> should we entertain a motion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve a conditional use permit allowing the River Park Commons multifamily townhome apartment development on the property addressed 4878 South Murray Boulevard, subject to conditions 1 through 12. Do we have a second? <clears throat> I'll second. All right. We have a motion from Commissioner Woodbury to approve the conditional use permit allowing the River Park Commons multifamily townhome apartments development on the property address 4878 South Murray Boulevard with the 12 conditions discussed and a second by Commissioner Patterson. Can we call a vote? Mr. Woodbury. Yes. Ms. Patterson. 
Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Let's move on to item number five. Let me make sure I'm correct before I say it. Yes. Item five is the Compass Preschool and Child Care. Is the applicant here tonight? Great. We'll be with you in a minute. And Mr. Smallwood from staff? Great. Yeah, so this is a proposal for a preschool and child care center um, here located off Vine Street. Um, currently, it is occupied by La Europa um, All Girls School. Um, La Europa, as you guys know, has come before you recently and um, gotten an um, approval to go into a new facility. And so um, with this being vacant, um, this applicant has come forward to um, occupy this space and open it as um, her actual third daycare facility. She currently maintains one in Midvale and one in Cottonwood Heights. Um, I had the pleasure to go out and do a site visit at one of her current locations. Um, it, it, it looked great. It looked well managed, um, pretty well done. Um, it is in the CN zone, which um, preschools are allowed conditionally in this zone. Here we have the um, the site plan of it. Um, it, it has a, um, sufficient parking. Um, one of the items I did want to address was um, through talks with engineering. Um, part of this was purchased um, a little bit of the right away was purchased from by murray city to widen vine street and during that process uh, murray city had worked out a deal to um, have them replace any landscaping so the landscaping in your packets um, will be required but not until after the widening so they they may open prior to that um, here is an in indoor site plan um, i believe uh, this has changed a little bit after I got an email after, um, over the weekend um, that this has been updated a little bit as well, um, but mostly the same. And then here I've just provided some photos for you, um, kind of look at the property. Um, it, it does comply with everything, so we are recommending approval subject to um, the nine conditions below. Are there any questions for me? I have one question. Sure. The change in the layout, we um, calculate parking according to how the space is used. Is it the parking still s sufficient? Actually, the parking is calculated uh, by the amount of children and staff members in, in for daycare facilities. And, and so this, um, we didn't see a change. And so that wouldn't, it wouldn't affect the parking ratios. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Does anyone else have a question? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank Small. You. Can we have the applicant step up to the podium, please? Hi, my name is Andrea Ramos, and we live on 7713 South, 1040 East in Midville. Ms. Ramos, have you had the opportunity to read the conditions? I have, yes. Do you feel like you can, compl can comply with the conditions? Yes. Great. Do you have anything you would like to add to the presentation? No, just the... That everything inside will be changed based on what the state requires. They require so many bathrooms per child, drinking fountains, sinks, things like that. And so I've just been working with the state and an architect to make sure all those things are met. Okay. Right. Thank you for explaining the changes. <laughs> Does anyone else have condition, um, questions? I have yeah. one question. So one of the requirements for a commercial facility is that the outdoor play area uh, is required by uh, the state for each child to have up to 40 feet of space to recreate in. So um, between 80 and 90 uh, children, 40 feet. So do you, is there 3,200 to 3,600 square feet um, on the side in the back of the facility for that? So the state actually caps it at 1,600 square feet, mm. um, but there is more than that. So through the back part, there's a grass on the east side and then the whole entire back part. So I will do a six foot fence on the east side of the building and then a smaller fence so that there's not a blind spot because it kind of turns around a corner. Um, but I have already talked to the state about that because they won't license me until there's a fence and the playground is safe. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
right. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. You can have a seat. We'll, okay. we'll talk to you again in a moment. All right. Um, so now we're going to open the discussion to the public. If anyone like to comment, please step to the podium. Okay. Seeing that there's none, we'll close the public comment and bring the discussion back up front. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a conditional use permit to allow a commercial daycare and preschool at the property addressed 1220 East Vine Street subject to the nine conditions. I'll second. Okay. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Patterson to uh, recommend approval of a conditional use permit to allow commercial daycare and preschool at the property address 1220 East Vine Street with the conditions one through nine as discussed. And we have a second by Commissioner Wilson. Call a vote. Sorry, <coughs> yes. 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 All right, thank you for doing business in Murray. Um, on to item number seven now, Hamlet Six. Development. Six. Oh, shoot. Why am I? I am de <laughs> dedicated to Hamlet tonight. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, item number six. Sorry, pa Paris RV. Applicants here tonight. Wonderful. We'll be with you in a minute. Staff. Great. So, um, this is a request for um, an electronic message center sign, which is EMC. It's kind of a switching out LED sign. Um, it's located here on um, State Street, um, just uh, south of 5300 South, a um, little bit south of that. Um, it currently is in the uh, CD zone, and um, EMCs are uh, conditional signs that we require a conditional use permit for that. And um, it does meet all, all the standards that we require for um, outdoor signs couple photos for you um, one of the uh, one of the conditions that are placed on there is that as you can see in this photo um, there are five parcels there and we're asking them to combine those five par five parcels into one um, because currently the way we calculate um, LED signs that would not be that would be too large in order to do it on just one of those parcels they have to have that whole frontage there in order to meet the sign requirements there so with that in mind, um, also here's a couple photos of the sign for you, um, of the existing sign that will be removed to place the new Paris sign. So with that, um, we are recommending approval and um, subject to the six conditions below. All right. Anything for me? Thank you. Do we have any questions? Looks like we don't. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Or would you please step to the podium? I know you're here. I already said hello. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karsten McCullough. Uh, live at uh, 138 East, uh, 12300 South, uh, Draper, Utah. Wonderful. Have you had the opportunity to read the conditions? Yes, I have. Can you comply? Can you comply with the conditions? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the presentation? Nope. Do we have any questions? I mean, I guess this is maybe for the city, but we haven't had any complaints on the Paris at the other location, have we? The no, sign or. Sorry. Not anything of that sign, yeah. so. Clarify, no. sign. sign, yeah, I'm just asking sign because we're putting in another sign, so have we had any complaints with the other location sign? No, okay, so, okay. And I don't have any questions on this one. I would just like to add that I, I think the city does a very good job of regulating the uh, LED signage and uh, condition number six is very thorough. And I think it uh, solves a lot of problems that may come up in, in other municipalities and that. And this makes this uh, an easy decision for me. Okay, any other questions, comments? All right, you have a seat. I would like to open the discussion for public comment. Okay, seeing that Seeing that there's none, we'll close the public comment section and bring it up front for discussion or a motion. Ma Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a conditional use permit to allow an electric messaging si center sign at the property address 5545 South State Street, subject to the six conditions. Do we have a second? I'll second. Great. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Patterson 
to approve a conditional use permit to allow electric messaging si center sign at the property address 5545 South State Street, condition, uh, subject to the conditions one through six. And we have a second by Commissioner Markham. Call to vote. Yes. 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 Motion pass passes. Thank you for doing business in Murray. There you go. All right. Okay, guys, which one are we on? <laughs> seven. <laughs> yes. The second number Okay. Seven and eight together. Okay, my third attempt. <laughs> we like to talk about item number seven and eight together. Ham Hamlet development. The applicant is here. I've asked three times. <laughs> and staff, would you like to present? Thank you. So this is, as you said, items seven and eight. So there are two requests. The first, item seven, is to amend the future land use map of the general plan. The second is to amend the zoning map for the same property. So in the presentation, we can talk about what that, what that means and why there are two requests. Um, the property, there's actually, there are actually four parcels, and the address that we, that we use, the address that's assigned to them officially, is a little bit strange. Um, Galleria Drive is on the east side of the property here, and they probably should be addressed on Galleria Drive. That's something we'll look at in the future here. Um, you got 4800 South up here. They're just south of 4800 South. This is the back side of the parking lot at AISU on the north side of AISU. So you can see Little Cottonwood Creek right here as well. And then the freeway, obviously. So uh, those four parcels together are the subject of the uh, applications. The uh, current zoning is mixed use. Um, and we'll come back to that in just a moment. The request, or the second request in item eight, is to change from, is to rezone from mixed use to RM15. Um, <coughs> RM15 is a zone that's desired, and that is not supported by the future land use map. So in every, in every city, every property is going to be designated in two ways. The first is on the future land use map, which kind of says what well, has a designation which contains several different zones that it might support. In this case, the designation uh, is blue right now. This blue color is professional office. And that designation um, allows really directs us to use one of two zones for this property. H for hospital, which is not really what's intended, and PO, which is a new zone that was created just this year um, for a professional office. We didn't have a professional office zone at the time we undertook the general plan um, in 2014 and finished in 2017. Um, this is a new zone that was just created, and it doesn't exist yet. Uh, it's not been applied anywhere in the city. But the, the general plan's the future land use map. The zone exists, sorry. It's not been applied anywhere. Uh, but it has been written and adopted at this point. So this future land use designation, in, in its simplest form, tells us that professional office is the zoning that would be appropriate to rezone to if we were entertaining a rezone application, because currently it's zoned mixed use. The, uh, the request is to rezone to RM15. That's not supported by this. Therefore, that's, the res that's why there's an application to change the future land use map designation to something that would support RM15, which is medium density residential. Um, that's this color here, actually, on this map that you're looking at. Sorry. That's indicated by this color here. So this property across the creek is actually in that designation. Uh, medium density residential. It's zoned the same, mixed use, but it's in a different designation under the future land use map. Um, a couple of pictures just to, to make sure we understand what we're all talking about. You're looking at Galleria Drive, looking in the first picture on the left, you're looking north toward 4800 South. The home at the kind of the end of the funnel there is on the opposite side of 4800 South. And then the second photo, you're looking south toward the Galleria, um, or toward the uh, AISU schools parking lot. Uh, and, and you can see the embankment of the freeway here. Again, that's that embankment of the freeway looking from the property. And then as you look down onto the property, it, it does drop down into this kind of area that you saw in that aerial photograph uh, to, those, to those acres that would be developed. Um, I wanted to just highlight a couple of things with the former general plans land use map and the current existing general plans land use map. In 2003, the city adopted the map on the left as a part of its general plan. The uh, subject properties are in that red box. You can see them right there. Now, that pink color that you're seeing represents mixed use. So at the time, and that mixed use, not the zone, but the future land use map designation. So at the time in 2003, sometime after, I believe in 2006 or seven, the city actually rezoned these properties to mixed use in accordance with its future land use map. When we revisited this plan 
several years later in 2014 and started talking about it. Uh, one of the things that was pointed out by the consultant team that we were employing was that we lacked an employment center and we lacked a good professional office zone. Uh, and we applied a lot of changes to the general plan's future land use map. And they're pretty, pretty well indicated in these, in, these, uh, in these segments. So on the right, you have the current section of the future land use map, and you can see that blue color. That was applied, this professional office designation was applied extensively in this area. If you, if you zoom, zoom out a little further, you can see it, its application uh, even more, but I wanted to be able to show you the, the specific properties. Uh, as you can see, this area here uh, is still, um, this is showing up as medium density residential on the future land use map. On the previous future land use map, it also was showing up as medium density residential. This part was, was mixed use the north side of the AISU parking lot, we actually have redesignated that to medium density residential, pulled it from the mixed use as well. In most cases, especially in this area where we pulled things back from that mixed use designation, we redesignated to different zones that we hadn't created or different designations that we hadn't had before, like business park. You can see this was mixed use before, now it's business park. This was, um, this was office, now it's professional office, so it allows a little more intense type of office uses. Uh, to sum up, um, this change was undertaken and uh, during that process um, was considered carefully and we felt like the highest and best use of the properties in this area was not necessarily as mixed use as we had thought previously in 2003 but more for professional office and other types of uses especially in the frontage there of Galleria and on 4800 South. So we have made several findings there in your report. Um, I wanted to just buzz through them quickly for you as part of the presentation and then make the staff's recommendation. Um, we find that redesignation of that future land use map is detrimental to the goals and objectives of the general plan that we just outlined, uh, creating an employment center, implementing a professional office zone. Um, second, that uh, we've carefully considered those things and those were carefully considered as we reviewed the 2017 general plan that's been adopted. And we find them to be um, contrary to the goals of that plan. Third, the amendment to the zoning map from MU to RM15 is not in harmony with the goals and objectives of the plan. We have a couple of different applications here, so we have findings for both. And fourth, uh, we find that the proposed amendments represent a downzoning of the property and will prevent us um, as a city from rezoning that property to professional office. If it's designated as medium density residential, we can't entertain a, a rezone application to professional office any longer that would be successful. And we feel like that will keep it from uh, achieving its highest and best use and from contributing to those goals uh, in the area for an employment center. Uh, any questions for staff at this point? We are recommending um, Denial, uh, rec we're recommending that the Planning Commission forward recommendations of denial for both applications. First, for the amendment to the general plan's future land use map, and second, for the amendments to the zoning map. Any questions for staff right now? And uh, Jared, I, I know that this is just a new office or a new zoning designation, you know, land use, and you know, I really like it. Um, I think it, obviously it's needed and across the city, but what's been the, the input so far? I know you can't speak to pending, you know, applications, but has there been a lot of interest in these type of zones across the city, um, you know, since we, we did this zone? They're recently adopted enough that we can't really gauge that. Okay. Uh, we've had some speculation for both the PO and the BP, but they're recently adopted. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know they're so recent. That's, yeah. Okay, and that and that's what was really my my question is do, you know do we have enough to see whether it's going to be a successful zone? We really don't know yet, okay. and that's part of our that's part of our our objection our recommendation of denial at this point as staff as well. And I think we say that in the findings. This is a this is a general plan that was adopted less than two years ago. Sure, and uh, we don't feel and we haven't felt in several other applications that have come. Uh, this year that it's that it's appropriate at this point to make amendments to the general plan unless there are corrections to uh, previously overlooked parcels or something like we've recommended in the past but in this case we carefully considered this parcel and designated it for professional office we feel like we'd like to see that play out longer than a year and a half before we make changes to that general plan thank you jared thanks thank you any other questions or comments from the commission okay can we have the applicants step to the podium, please? Thank you, Jared. Um, Michael Brodsky, Hamlet Development, 308 East, 4500 South. And Zach, is it possible to display that email I sent you? Oh. Um, 
right. Mr. Brodsky, yes. can I first ask you if you've been able to read the conditions and if you feel like you can, can comply with them? There are no conditions. I've been denied. No I apologize. It's easy so to comply. With you can comply you then, right? No, I don't want to comply. <laughs> <laughs> or you might not. Okay. Is it, so what would you like to add to the presentation? Um, I'm in an unusual situation because I rarely disagree with staff's recommendation. Uh, you've got a, an extraordinary, knowledgeable, and professional um, <clears throat> planning staff here. And as you, most of you are aware, I've worked with them for years. Um, we are suggesting uh, that the... Well, first off, the MU zone right now would permit, uh, as a permitted use, very high density residential uh, apartments in the hundreds on this three acre uh, property. Um, the rezoned to uh, office use um, is certainly a feasible uh, use because it is part of your master plan, but you need to take a quick, a hard look at the uh, location and ask yourself, is office really an appropriate use in a location like this? You're buffered on one side by a very steep embankment onto uh, the highway. There's virtually no visibility here for a professional office. Um, the use that we are recommending, and I'd like to ask uh, Haley to pass out, um, just an example of what we are proposing to do. Um, but the use that we're looking at on this is an RM rezone would be something very similar to what we just built in Ballantor on 9th East and what we built uh, last year at 13th West. It's a combination of uh, townhomes and single family detached homes. Um, the, there would be a row of single family homes that would buffer uh, the creek in a very attractive, uh, densely wooded setting. Uh, the townhouses that we're proposing that we just showed you uh, would front uh, the Galleria Drive and back up into uh, the neighborhood. Um, the immediately adjacent use on the other side of the creek, uh, the Galleria property has recently been uh, redesignated for the exact zone that I'm recommending here, the MU zone. And I submit to you that while this is not the highest and best use in terms of economic rewards to the city, it's a very practical use. Um, it is not, in my professional opinion, I don't think that it's very likely that you're going to get someone here that would like to build uh, office space. Um, it's much more likely that you'll find somebody ultimately here that wants to build some high density apartments. So again, I apologize to Jared, I apologize to staff because I don't like to disagree with uh, your professionals, but in this case I respectfully submit that what you have in front of you is a much more appropriate use for this property. All right. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for the applicant? No, not right now. Okay, not at the moment. All right. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Um, I think we need to hear from the public before we bring it up here for discussion. So we'll open for public comment. Would anyone like to make a comment? Okay. Closing the public comment. There's a lot of you here still. <laughs> okay. Our last one. Okay. Closing the public comment okay. um, section. And now we'll bring it up front for discussion. Yes, Mr. McNulty. Um, just as a word or advisement, I need to advise you that the applicant did uh, submit to you a handout of their proposed plans. You know, as in any rezoning, we, we can't take that into consideration. Tonight you're looking at the potential rezoning of a piece of property as well as a general plan amendment. Um, the same would be the case in, in, in it going to the city council next month. Whether you recommend denial or approval, it has to go to the city council. And again, we've been advised by legal staff that we have to look at the zoning and the land use amendment or the amendment to the general plan on the merits of use of land. In this case, it would be an RM15 type zone, not a plan that they are proposing. Just want to make that clear for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, as the applicant, I believe you're allowed to make a comment that procedure sure 
I don't disagree with what Mr. McNulty has said to you. However, there are uh, there are processes that you can employ to assure that the um, plan that I am suggesting is a approved plan prior to the city council accepting uh, the rezone uh, request. And I just did that in the MU zone where I'm building uh, a 34,000 square foot office building at uh, 100 West and 48 South and the residential property behind it. We entered into a memorandum of understanding with the city that identified the specific intended use. Uh, and that was the only permitted use that could go on that property after that MU was a, a memorandum of understanding was entered into. So you do have ways to assure that the uh, concept that you're being shown is actually what gets built. Mr. McNulty, you'd like to comment again? Mr. Yeah. You guys want to just stand banter. there together? <laughs> <laughs> That's Point. case by case, and we would take that under advisement by our city attorney. That would be the next step. You know, we'll go to city council, and the city attorney could advise if indeed that is the case. But I want to clarify, we have this professional office zone that we're talking about, and we've identified it on our general plan throughout the cities and the areas where it can go. Uh, just so you understand, the area where Security National is building their campus and there will be six, eight, and 10-story Class A office buildings, that will be rezoned to professional office at some point in time. We just haven't initiated that yet, but that will also be a professional office zone, as the hospital area will be a professional office zone. So just so you understand, that, that zone lends itself to that type of development pattern. So there's quite a bit of height that can be realized in that zone. Um, I'd, I'd just like to say that, you know, I, I chose not to look at the uh, information presented to us uh, this evening because, once again, we're not considering a project, and there really truly is nothing to hold Hamlet Development to uh, building uh, anything that they've given us tonight. Um, things change. Things change all the time. Until we have a final product, project in front of us, I am not even going to look at that, um, and I don't think it has any bearing whatsoever on the decisions that we are going to make tonight concerning this project. And I've just I've seen it before, where we have been somewhat dazzled by something, and the final product mm -hmm. is not what we were dazzled by. Well, I was just going to say I think as far as um the zoning, I see, I, I mean, I love the professional office idea. I do see how this particular property has some restrictions on that. It doesn't have great access. I, I mean, I love that it's so close to the freeway, but you, you, you're getting off at 45th and going all the way around, or you're getting off at 53rd and going all the way around. This is a, it, because of where it is right off of 48th, it is a little bit isolated. Um, but I think that I come back to the idea that, you know, in this area in particular, the general plan was very carefully scoped out on all of these properties. And this re, designation in the general plan of future land use was really carefully considered and I would like to give it the space to play out as it has been designated in the future land use map. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and I, you know, much like, um, you know, Marin is, is, I mean, I have concerns about this property as far as, you know, the professional <laughs> office and the, and that it, I got a feeling it's going to be one of the last product yeah. properties developed for professional office because of those access issues. Um, I did look at the the, the packet that uh, the applicant brought, and it reaffirmed to me that Hamlet does wonderful work, um, that they've been a great asset to the city and brought some great things here. Um, but for me, it's just too soon. It's just too soon to 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 change something that that we have to kind of let and see play out. Um, and, and so, I mean, should we ever change it? And, and uh, you know, I, I, Hamlet would be the first one for me to come in and do that because they do a wonderful job and they really are a great asset um, to, the, to, the, to the city. But I, I can't really support a zone change based on, you know, it's just, it's too new. We need to see it play out and let, let the process work a little bit more. So. 
I'd like to state that I greatly appreciate the comments from Commissioner Markham, Commissioner Patterson, and Commissioner Woodbury. I agree with all of them. In addition to those thoughts, this piece of property we're discussing is kind of in the middle of this PO zone, and I'm concerned that if we change that zoning there, we're jeopardizing the zoning above and below as well, not giving the whole area an opportunity to develop, even though that property has some difficulties associated with it. So. I too would have to um, echo all of the comments to include from staff. Hamlet's done great work in Murray, appreciate that tremendously. But I think the, the plan is pretty new and I, I also think we should let it play out a little bit longer before we um, start changing that zone. Okay. Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion um, that we forward a recommendation of denial to the City Council for the requested amendment to the general plan future land use map, redesignating the property located at 4850 South 380 West from professional office to medium density residential. I'll second. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Woodbury to recommend a denial to the City Council for the requested amendment to the general plan future land use map redesignating the property located at 4850 South 380 West from professional office to medium density residential and a second by Commissioner Patterson. Can we call it a vote? Commissioner Woodbury? Yes. Commissioner Patterson? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Commissioner Hacker? Yes. 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 So staff, we need another motion. We need another motion. Yeah. still yep. need a and second motion. Um, Madam Chair, oh, oh, you can do it. No? Go. Okay. I'd like to forward a recommendation of denial to the City Council for the requested amendment to the zoning map designation of the property address 4850 South 380 West from MU Mixed Use to RM15 Multifamily Residential. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All right. We have a motion from Commissioner Patterson to recommend a denial to the City Council for the requested amendment to the zoning map designation of the property located at 4850 South 380 West from MU mixed use to RM15 multifamily residential and a second by Commissioner Hacker. Call to vote. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank Madam, you so Madam much Chair, for your business. If, if I can make one comment on this, I, I think um, sometimes people come in and feel like that, you know, we just go along with what the city says. Um, but, you know, I think this commission, Phil and I have been on this for six and a half years, now seven years, and, and we really take pride in looking at every issue individually. You know, there was one just recently we went against the city the recommendations um, on a rezone, and um, we really do look at each thing individually. Um, and take great pride in 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 us as a commission looking at at everyone and and so um, and anyway, I thank you for coming in and we appreciate Hamlet in in the city and um, you know thank you for doing business and uh, we we definitely do consider everything that that comes to us very carefully so. <laughs> I'm, I'm have sure, no doubt. <laughs> I'm sure we will see you again. So. We're going to count on that. Yeah, yeah, and appreciate it. But, Which is we're, awesome. We're, yeah. Thank you. Look forward to that. Yes, we do. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Brodsky. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank. All right. All right. Okay. So, item number nine, Utah Water Gardens. Is the applicant here tonight? Great. Okay, Mr. Smallwood. Great. So, um, this is a uh, request to rezone a property from what is currently R110 zoning um, to uh, A1, which is our agricultural zone. Um, the applicant has uh, owns a um, agribusiness uh, where she does pond maintenance and also grows um, aqua, oh my gosh, what's the word? Aquatic, Aquatic plants, thank you. Uh, yeah, Aquaman, she grows <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you are not Aquaman. Uh, I am Zach, not. I'm sorry. I'm a little I'm more sorry. flabby, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and also uh, koi as well. Um, and this is for both. Uh, do you do commercial and residential use? I believe yes. Um, and so she's looking. It does meet with our uh, general plan. Um, 
A1 is considered a low des density residential zone, um, so it would meet with the, the general plan requirements. Um, as a condition of approval, we would require um, that that the two properties be combined into one um, through a lot line adjustment um, that would allow it to become a uh, conforming within the A1 zone of one acre for a property. Um, some photos here. I, I, I walked around the site for a good half hour. It was kind of fun. Um, and so with that being said, um, we are recommending that uh, staff forward a recommendation, recommendation of approval to the city council subject to the one condition that I had mentioned before. I think Anything said. from for staff at the moment? We were discussing it and I, Jeez. does this doesn't require a major home occupation, does it? Because we're going to, it would go to A1. Not in the act. Okay, and that's what I thought. Um, so. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure. I mean, it requires a business license and, and all that, but in the That's ag correct. zone, they can grow all the aquamen they want. Yes. <laughs> and women. Yes, aquamen. Aqua women as well. Aqua person. <laughs> aquaman and mermaids. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Zach. Zach, you you've thought way, you drift thought way too now. much you can, about You I'm can sorry. sit I'm down. Way, way too much. <laughs> That's You're, the uh, line. Wow. Uh, I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we have any more questions for staff? Legit no? questions for staff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Let's, let's have the applicant, right? Step forward, please. Hello, my name is Shada McGuire. Um, I am hoping that um, we can purchase this property it's all based on if we can get the a1 agricultural so that um, we're an existing business in um, Mill Creek and our la our um, landlord recently sold the property so they can do high density housing on it <laughs> and it was previously agricultural and had greenhouses on it Dang for over Mill 45 Creek. years and so we have lost mm -hmm. our home and we have lost our ability I mean for the moment so until we found this place um, we are kind of in transition so we have a temporary greenhouse and some storage units housing everything and we have some lovely customers that are being foster parents to our koi fish in our front pond um, I'm not sure if I'm able to show you I have a picture of our, our greenhouses and our front pond kind of some of the things that we do I'm not sure if I'm able to pass that Miss Ms. McGuire can I ask you a question real quick yes have you had an opportunity to read the one condition? Yes, and I believe we're able to do that. Excellent. Yes, I believe Thank we're you. able to, to conform to that condition. Oh, and she did. She did. She did. Yes, she's did. 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 Yeah. her yeah. name address, right? Okay, we're good. I missed Please. the address. Um, and this, uh, this property does have um, a, resi a home on it, and that would be our primary residence. Um, it does have a, a, a barn on it. Um, it, as part of the whole area before it was Cottonwood High School um, and the, the surrounding area belonged to one family, the Loizos family. Um, and as they kind of sold off some of the property, they built Cottonwood High School and they sold off parcels and Sam held on to it until he passed away this last March. Um, and he retired in 85 and went back to farming the land using the original barn that is on the property. That is the, the existing barn when the whole um, area used to be a farm. And we're, we're kind of, you know, a unique business. So this would not kind of fit for everybody. Not everyone would come in and be able to use a barn and to use the existing structures, but we would keep all the structures the same. We would not remove any of them or tear them down as long as they're safe. Um, and so we've had them inspected and then we would just add some greenhouses that you can move around. Um, and of course we would comply with whatever city, city ordinances are for greenhouses, but we're hoping that if you know the zoning goes forward, uh, we can move on to this property and continue our agricultural business um, I'm a botanist that's my background so greenhouses that's what I do I went to school in, at Weber State University for botany and geology so um, yeah does, does do you guys have any questions for me I would be happy to answer them I, I want one of these <laughs> <laughs> we could help with that we build ponds yeah we service all of northern Utah currently um, we service Idaho Montana Wyoming um, there are customers we have customers coming down through us through 
um, from Nevada as well. They have they just la lost their last pawn store in Henderson, Nevada, um, in March of 2017. So full service pawn stores, you know, with uh, aquatic nurseries are very rare um, in uh, the western half of the U.S. Until you get Please to don't. California and San Diego, then there's a lot of them there. So we kind of have a big scope that we serve in the in the you know in the West. And so, yeah, we're just hoping that everything moves forward so that we can continue having our, our agricultural business. And we'd love to have it in Murray. I went to Cottonwood High School, um, mm -hmm. and I would have loved to have had the opportunity to have a greenhouse nearby where we could go in and see how a greenhouse works. Um, if we get this property, I would like to open it up to Cottonwood High School and to allow them to um, maybe have some of their science teachers come, teach some classes, show them what a working greenhouse looks like. I think that would be an asset to the community. Yes, any questions for me? I don't have any, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say that was a great presentation. You yeah. did a really good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good, good job. <laughs> you, did, you did great. You did great. Any other questions? No. Discussion? No. no. Okay, cool. well, I'm just open to public comment. I'm Yingma, and uh, I'm living just uh, south south there's a property. So I just worry about uh, if change to agriculture, um, if they sold it, what it will be? They can yeah. uh, house uh, housing the horse. That's why they were worried. It became horse. It smell is awful. But the greenhouse is fine. But uh, I don't know if they sold out in the future, become a uh, agriculture land and it's uh, kind of scary to reduce the house uh, value. That's what I worried. Understand. Yeah. We can we can address that in a minute. Okay. Are there any anyone else who would like to speak? So my name's Denise Winslow and I live at 615 East, 5640 South here in Murray. And I'm a proud pond and koi owner, and yes, Ms. Wilson, you need one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm happy to be here to support the Utah Water and Garden business um, because they have really supported me. Um, in the years that I've had a pond, it's, it has been hard to find reputable people to help and uh, to help develop this. And in the time that I've known them, um, they're quite a reputable business. Um, they've sunk their roots deep into this business. They've helped me with my sick koi. They've helped me with um, building and problems. Um, and they run a really reputable business. Um, I think that is probably the most important thing to me. This would be a great asset for our community to have them near, to have uh, been in their green, greenhouses. I've, I've been over to their business and bought their products many times. And I just want to tell you, I think, uh, in, it, in our community, this would be a great asset. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to comment? We got one here. I'll get one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Ebony Barres, and I live at a 4117 South Clubhouse Drive. Um, in an apartment complex. So um, I am a previous and current um, employee of uh, Christopher and Shada McGuire. Um, sorry, I'm nervous. I'm kind of emotional about this. Don't be nervous. Oh, God. It's okay. I have been too. So, <laughs> right? Okay, you get it, right? You get it. Thank you. Um, okay, so I started working, which was originally Desert Water Gardens. Um, the original owner was uh, Sterling Herman. He's right behind here. Um, yeah, he's extremely intelligent. Um, and um, so I started working for him in uh, August, I'm sorry, April 2007. And on and off, um, I've been working there. And through a change of hands due to leasing agreements, um, fortunately, uh, Shada and Christopher McGuire, they have um, gained the opportunity to um, become a uh, owner of Utah Water Gardens. So they did change the name um, in a sense because of the leasing agreement um, that was sold. And um, let me tell you, um, actually they are wonderful to work for. Um, I do see the benefit of having this type of business. Um, 
sorry, I'm really nervous. Uh, so there's a thing called um, a pond tour, where it's like the parade of homes, but it's for ponds and water features. So you go around, it's two days um, out of a week, um, the beginning of August, and you go around and look at different types of water features and ponds, either something that you would like to um, acquire or to change in your water feature. And this is a very special niche type of business, as she, as Shada had um, said before. But let me tell you, it's not going to be another Walmart. It's not going to be another Starbucks. It's not going to be a lot of um, customers going in and out, a lot of, you know, uh, noise. No horses, I promise. <laughs> no horses. Um, but once again, it's more specialized. And if you actually sit down um, to enjoy one of the ponds, either that Denise Winslow has, um, but she was also part of the pond tour. Um, or come to a pond club meeting, you would see how special and how much needed this business is. So I just hope you put that in consideration that, um, yes, it is a little bit different and it's not going to be another, you know, high rise or, um, apartment complex, fortunately. Um, but I think you would really, really enjoy it. And I think the type of uh, location that it's in would be really much needed. Thank you. Thank you. Did anyone else like the comment? All right, so we'll close the public comment and bring it back up for discussion. Or I, I would just like to offer my opinion on the concern of you know if it, if it is rezoned to agricultural. That that is true. You know, it, it is agricultural for agricultural uses in the future until it is rezoned to something else. But I'm I'm quite confident that the value of this property if it were ever sold and someone wanted to utilize it for an agricultural purpose uh, the amount of money they would have to spend to acquire this property i don't think that you would have a lot of animals just roaming aimlessly and creating nuisances for the neighborhood and that the the location of this property is quite unique and um, the only way i could think that they would have horses there is if they were an extremely rare breed of horses and you know a, a, a real high-tech uh, type of operation so I think that concerns like that in the future um, I, I don't really see that as as being a concern and I would just like to say one thing to the uh, um, applicant this is uh, we talked about this in our in our pre-meeting this is the final agenda item for mm -hmm. this this year and it's nice to have something like this to close out the year. I personally am thrilled that this has come before us. So thank you. Yeah, I think it's really, really cool project. I didn't realize that there was a, a pond tour and I got something else to do in my summer activities with my five kids. Um, pond, pool, pond would be good for you. Yeah, yeah, it, de it definitely would. Um, I don't really have a pool body, so I have more That's of a That's a line from Caddyshack, by the way. I got, I got it. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm going to say. Anyway, it's a cool project. and <laughs> You all did a good job speaking, and uh, it really is. It's a great project, and it's it's fun to to be in a city that, that has vision and, and but also allows for, for creative projects and things. And, you know, obviously this changes a zoning. It's not necessarily in in harmony. I mean, I guess it still is, it's still low density, but it's, it's a little different, but it's just a great project. It's a great project. We love it. It brings, it brings some um, culture to the, the community. And I think it's definitely a great project. So all supportive and I echo what, uh, what Phil says as well. So. Okay. All right. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we forward a recommendation of approval to the city council for the requested zone map amendment for the properties located at 5901 and 5911 south 1300 east from r110 single family low density residential to a1 agricultural subject to the following conditions which there is just one do you have a second i'll second all right we have a motion from commissioner wilson to forward a recommendation of approval to the City Council for the requested zone map amendment for the property located at, at 5901 and 5911 South, 1300 East, from R110 single family low density residential A1 ag agricultural subject to the one condition. And we have a second by Commissioner Markham. Please call the vote. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Ms. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Woodbury? Yes. Make them sweat. Yes. 
Thank you for doing business. Motion passes. With your business. Yes. Thanks for being quiet. Thank you for coming to Murray. Any other business, Mr. McNulty? Very briefly, um, just a, a reminder, and, and you mentioned it, our uh, regularly scheduled meeting for December 20th, two weeks from tonight, has been canceled. We're not going to have a meeting that night. Our next meeting will be in the new year, January 3rd, 2019. Happy holidays. Um, thank you for your service this year and a great meeting this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Oh. oh second. Okay, we have a motion, a second. Yay. We all agree. Nay. Yay. Vote. Let's go. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Media adjourn. Smack that gavel. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>